Oh, hello, and uh, welcome to Animation Try. I'm your host, Stu. Uh, with me, as usual, are Aaron and Lish. As you can see, we're currently working on developing our latent psychic abilities. We thought we'd give it a go, you know, as a way to spice up our special review of uh, Mob Psycho 100. What makes it so special, I hear you ask? They did. I was being rhetorical. You were being pretentious. Quite possibly. <laughs> but, uh, shut up. Or else. Or else what? Would you care to test that hypothesis? Bring it! Guys! A time to concentrate. Fair enough. Spoiler time. Mm. As I was saying, this is a special review for two reasons. The first being that this is our first viewer-requested video. Requested, I might add, by the excellent Larry Sims. Now, the reason this took so long to come out uh, is because, well, we are professionals, and we strive for perfection. Apparently it was because he was distracted by anything. Or that he lacks time management skills. Tell me. I should really be working on that review for Mob Cycle 100. Eh. <laughs> yes, and reason number two being that we have a special interview with one of the voice actors from Mob Psycho 100 later. This, of course, being the insanely talented and awesome Chris Neosi. That's right. Animator and voice actor extraordinaire Chris Niosi will be joining us later on to discuss his role as Reagan Arataka. Chris Niosi, or Kyber for 15, the creator of Tome, Tina, the Magical Enterprise. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, maybe if we all just keep saying his name, our view count will go up. Chris That's Niosi! That was weird. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Worth a shot. Yeah, um, worth a shot. We should get on with the review. Yeah, this has become a bit of a tangent, hasn't it? Tangent jar. Tangent jar. Hey, up. What were y'all doing? Oh, sh <laughs> Random special guest! special guest. Hi, because I'm Adam. You've seen him before. Yeah, you remember. Well, if you children, haven't, go watch the other videos. Why don't He's you? There. I know. Come on. Why? We've got links to them below. Easy. Hey, Easy. He's so, yeah. so passionate. I know. Yeah, and he tries to hold it down, count to 100, and What's then he blows. We're talking about the right? main character of the show, right? We are. Yes, we <laughs> are. And what yes. show is that? Mob Psycho 100. Woo! Woo! Created Woo! by the amazing one. That's, That's very really all we know about name. him, really. Kind of uh, like Cher yeah. or Madonna. Yeah. You know, one. Yeah. By the way, very misleading name. Yes. yes. Very misleading too. name. I thought with a name like Mob Psycho 100, it was basically going to be an anime version of The Sopranos. Yes. yes. Mob Psycho. Psycho. A teen with explosive psychic abilities. Mm hmm Let's explain why it's named Mob Psycho 100. Well, first of all, you have the main character who is called Mob. Now, his name is something of a pun because, you know, the Japanese love their puns. Oh, don't they? Very yes, funny. they do. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. <laughs> so, Mob basically translates to uh, background character, really? is what it comes from, yes. It's a pun on, the, on, a, on a word for background character. But he's the main character. Yes, so but like he doesn't confusing. look like one, does he? When you look at his character... So clever. Oh. You know, let's throw up a picture of him really quick so you can actually take a good look at him. And there you go. That's what he looks like, folks. Uh, mm -hmm. He looks like any type of background character, and that's the point. It's this background character who is the main character, like basically. Like Harry Potter. <laughs> Minus <laughs> the scar. And... Some emotional baggage, I guess. No, they all have emotional yeah, baggage. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a guarantee. Yeah. If you're a main character, you're going to have emotional baggage. Especially in anime. Oh, God, yes. I think uh, that's a requirement. It is. <laughs> you have to. But hey, at least they didn't go the route of no mom and no dad syndrome. Oh, uh, not like they have no, some very supportive not like Disney films. Yeah. Got a point. 
The pa- what was that? Supportive parents. I will say they, that. Out of all the anime parents I have parents. seen, I, I gotta say, I love his parents. They are really cool. Because they're, they're just are. cool with him being a psychic. Exactly. And it's just like, oh, you're psychic. Oh, you spent a spoon again? You gotta stop doing that, son. Come on. <laughs> oh, it's his age. You know, they just do that. There's Ugh. no such thing as normal, which means there's all kinds of normal. I and know. the parents yeah. get that. I feel like... Yeah. The parents are part of the revolution. It's true. Very yeah. true. So yes, we have Mob, and we then have, who's this powerful psychic, but he's not the first character we're introduced to, is he? No, he is not. Who is the first character we were introduced to? <laughs> Why? It's Reagan, and I'm gonna butcher his last name. Eritaka. Uh, Eritaka, there we go. Yay, thank you. You're welcome. Teamwork. Yay, there we go. Yes. It works. Reagan Ataka, who is a psychic extraordinaire. So Yeah, yeah. Charlotte. <laughs> uh, you know, we had so many of those type of characters, but the thing is, this one's quite different, actually. Yeah, he actually is. I will say this. By the end of the series, he became one of my favorite characters, if not my favorite. I think he was everybody's favorite, yeah. honestly. Yeah, down. So, we are introduced to Reagan Ataka, who mm -hmm. runs this psychic... Um, spirit consultation. Consultation, there we go, yeah. yeah. But it's basically a company for ridding yourself, your home, your environment of evil spirits. Mm -hmm. And yeah. under his charge is his boy, protege, understudy, blah, blah, blah. mob is his underling, basically. Mm -hmm. But mob is the one doing all of the impressive work. He's the backbone of the business. Out. He really is. And you get to kind of learn a tiny bit about Mob's history mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and basically chronicles the adventures of mm -hmm. Mob and Reagan. He's like that one family member he always wished he had ever had. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And we come kind of to think about, even though he's this kind of man, he sucks at his job, basically. But the thing is, even though he does not have powers, people tend to believe him does have powers. He has the power to make you feel good. Yes. And he does. Oh my god. Like, this guy, Reagan, he could just be your run-of-the-mill sleaze, okay? Mm -hmm. Because he could just be taking their money, swindling them, um, telling them all the things they want to hear, mm -hmm. and then bye, see you, fly by night. But he gives but them awesome instead, advice. He gives them mm -hmm. great advice, he gives them great food, he gives them massages, and he does it all hilariously. He earns his money. There he may you go. be honest, but he earns it. <laughs> but we know we're talking a lot about Reagan. we got to talk a bit more about Mob. It, it is really named did. after it Mob. Is, yeah, yeah. Well, with a character Mob. who shows so little like, exp you know, emotions or anything, it's kind of hard to get into him until he really starts to cut loose. Which isn't really until halfway through the season. Yeah. Which is understandable because, well, his powers are tied to his emotions, mm -hmm. all right? So he does tend to suppress a lot of his emotions. In a way, he reminds me a lot of Raven from Teen Titans. In Thank a way. you, alright. Well, the way her emotions were always tied to her powers. And she always had that, I don't know if I should call it this, but basically resting bitch face. <laughs> With lots of sarcasm. And Mob yeah. definitely has, yeah. <laughs> has the RBF. Because there was one scene where he's playing with the other children... And they're asking him if he's having a good time, and he's like, I'm having the time of my life. <laughs> but he, he says it just like that. He's like, I'm having the time of my life. Yeah. Oh, hey, well. <laughs> but where's your smile? Like, how can mm -hmm. I believe you? And yeah. the truth is, like, most of his emotions are just very subdued, except for his rage, his anger, his fear. Basically, if he's feeling some kind of aggressive or threatening emotion... That's when he blows. That's true. Mm. I actually saw it a little different. Maybe my understanding was slightly different. In uh, episode, I think, three, was it? They explained what happens when it hits 100. Mm -hmm. It's whatever emotion he's feeling at that current moment. So we saw it in a couple of times where it's been anger. We've seen fear. And in one case, we've seen um, bravery, I guess, in a way, or just courage. But it, it depends on what emotion he's feeling, because he has been sad. Because remember, when he destroyed that entire uh, school and everything, 
He was sad. That's when it hit 100 that's, again. But that's where it's it's a threatening emotion because he yeah. doesn't know how to deal with his sadness. Mm -hmm. um, in the case of being courageous and like trying to protect his friends, he's going on the offensive. Mm -hmm. So that's threatening. Anger, you know. Mm -hmm. Again, he doesn't do it when he's happy. We haven't really seen he, him happy. That's exactly. the thing. So yeah. Um. I mean, there's a. As I said, this is only the first season, so we haven't really gotten too far into it. So I think there's still something to see about that. But I think you're right with the emotions that come out the most in it. And uh, honestly, it kind of strikes me as a bit of like toxic masculinity, honestly, because he he like works so hard to suppress everything and just pretend that it's not there. Exactly. And it builds and builds and builds and builds until he can't control it, and then it just comes out, whereas mm -hmm. if he just let off a little bit of steam now and then, mm -hmm. his powers might be more manageable. Well, it has been hinted at. Now, I haven't gotten that far in the manga, all right? But in the anime, they do show flashbacks to his brother getting picked on, all yes. right? And he let loose on the bullies. Oh, that was a very violent As way to go. He <laughs> yeah. They, they didn't die. Sure enough, could have. That was the moment Quickly where he. Butt pair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> In case you're wondering what that's about, um, when he does let loose on the bullies, uh, the one bully is completely stripped of his clothing and is floating through the air naked. But the Japanese uh, anime, it's very common to see nudity. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's this naked teenager just floating through the air and all you can see is like his butt and it is a hairy butt like well, they they drew, drew, it was they drew drew the butt hair and <laughs> not gonna lie it was a little shocking <laughs> i didn't expect them to take that kind of detail in a guy's butt like they really thought this through <laughs> Are you? <laughs> I, I will gladly pay the tangent <laughs> for that. If nothing else, watch it for the butt hair. Yeah, you know. it's, it's weird. It's weird. And hey, girls need fan service too. There you go. This is not fan service. It depends was... on your definition of fan service, I guess. Oh, and don't your taste. get into it, please, though. <laughs> okay, so yeah. Um, as I said, he doesn't want to hurt people because he knows that his powers can hurt people. So he, I think that's one way. He realizes think, how powerful he is. Yes. Not so much that you know, it's, it's, it's a given with these characters, these espers, mm -hmm. that have this latent uh, psychic ability. They know that mm -hmm. they can hurt people. It's but it's it's just that he realizes how powerful he is, and very that's from very early on. Mm -hmm. He knows how powerful he is. That's so, a good change of pace. Which is so, fine, yeah. but he doesn't know how to manage it. Exactly. He spends so much time being afraid of himself. Well, he's, in a way, he's emotionally um, uh, repressed, very much so. But that's what brings in Reagan. That's why mm -hmm. so Reagan is such a great character for him to be around. Reagan is not emotionally repressed at all. At all, he's no. <laughs> but there is something I do want to address. The title, The Psycho. Now, when I first watched... Uh, the episode one or so of it. Um, oddly enough, I had literally just looked up the definition for the term psychopath. Oh, pre -tell. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, uh, I actually have it right over here. <laughs> He's leaving. Ta-da! Wow! You see, right. psychopath, as described in the dictionary, is a person with psychopathic personality, which manifests as amoral or antisocial behavior, lack of ability to love or establish meaningful personal relationships, extremely eccentric, failure to learn from experiences, all right? And... That's not mom. No, it's not. No. Well, about but half of that is. Some of it is. <laughs> some of it does apply to him. But a psychopath also has a trouble understanding emotions. Uh, that is one there thing. Is. That is one of the classifying things is that that determines a psychopath. Now you can be a psychopath and not be violent because you can rate on a spectrum. So uh, we do see that he has trouble with understanding emotion to some degree. He really does. As I said, I think he rates on the spectrum, but low level on the spectrum. He has trouble expressing emotion. He doesn't have trouble experiencing emotions. Or acknowledging that emotions aren't there. Yeah, he just doesn't know how to deal with his own, and I think mm -hmm. that's a lot of people. Exactly. And I think that's a lot of men, which is mm -hmm. why I do bring it back to toxic masculinity, mm -hmm. because men are basically told that they are allowed two speeds. They are allowed happy, and they are allowed angry. 
you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so when he's dealing with any other emotion than that, like, when he's angry, he's angry. Exactly. And, you know, like, a lot of men, especially, like, in Japan, where mm -hmm. they do have a culture of honor, mm -hmm. um, it, it makes sense that he would unleash his anger in big ways. Mm -hmm. um, but it, when he's scared, when he's protective, when he's courageous, uh, he's got to try and find, like, a way to deal with that. I'm happy you brought up mm -hmm. the idea of masculinity because when you, when you think about it, the show in that way, mm -hmm. you're brought uh, uh, up against the other characters in the show, specifically the other male characters. Mm -hmm. Very and it's mainly uh, from the, yeah. the schools as that. Exactly. Well, yeah. 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 Just think oh, about Kanazawa. Or the men from the, the bodybuilding club. Yeah, the, yeah. the, the yeah. body yeah. grooming yeah. club. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. And that's something that um, my uh, eventually enters into. Because he wants to be more manly. He wants to join humanity. He wants yes. to be popular. Exactly. Yeah. He wants to be normal. And I think that's where the whole show comes into. The idea of what is normal for him, what is normal for anyone. Mm -hmm. We mentioned the brother and about how he, spoiler alerts, he gains psychic abilities. But let's call about why he gets psychic abilities. Why does he? He has, this, when you're first introduced with the character Ritsu, um, you're introduced him definitely as his brother, mm -hmm. but he's supposed to be the loving brother, or the brother that can do no wrong. The prodigal son. Mm. There you go. Yeah. Except yeah, he didn't leave and then come back. But yeah. He does later he's, kind of become the prodigal yeah. son. He's the favorite. Anyway. He's, <laughs> he's the baby in the favorite. He's the baby, but he's also the more successful one, because he is outgoing. Oh. He is very... But it, he has a secret, though. Mm -hmm. In dysfunctional yes. family lingo, he would be the mascot. Yes, exactly. he would. Yeah, I can yeah. see that, yeah. Yeah. But the problem with Retsu is that, yes, he's popular, yes, he's liked, and, he's def and his brother has no problem with mm -hmm. him. He actually and he loves his love the, uh, He's very fond of him, but... But Retsu has a problem. He's a little bit jealous. A bit? <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it might be overstuffed. It's quite things. ironic, really, with this character, because you have his brother, who just adores him. Mm -hmm. And he feels, though, that with Mob having so much power... Maybe he's li at least living without something meaningful in his life. Hmm. And when he witnesses this power from his brother, Mob, he wants that power in himself. Hmm. That he's makes sense. He's gotta have everything, doesn't he? Everybody's gotta got, want Spoiled something. Time. Yeah. He got <laughs> everything! Yeah, but not the thing he got wants the powers, it. But the other one gets, like, the friends and the girls and yeah. the. Sometimes you know, that's just not enough for everybody. Yeah, that's kind of point. Well, but at the nothing same time, would be enough for that guy. Oh, <laughs> well, well, let's he look gets at powers. He does get powers. Yes, yes, and, and he then got... he becomes a right, like first class dick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he does actually. Yeah, he really does. He does become a first a class. A giant dick, wrinkly phallus. But he realizes, but he realizes the error in his ways, though. Mm -hmm. Which is something it takes you don't him a while, but yeah. It does. It takes his brother to ground him, I think. Yeah, and getting his ass kicked by Claw. There you go. The bad yeah, guys. Too. You have to have someone in Oh, here. yeah. It's Evil espers and all that. That was really fun. Um, we're forgetting about another character. Oh, we are. We are forgetting about Dimple. Dimple. <sighs> no. Oh, this character. Oh. He's, he's interesting because so he mm -hmm. starts off as a supposed bad guy. Mm -hmm. He's a demon leading a cult, but the cult just laughs at everything. That's their shtick. That's mm -hmm. what they do. They laugh at things. I mean, honestly, if it wasn't for the fact they were being so, you know... Cultish. Yeah, cultish. I wouldn't have a problem with them because their whole deal is about being happy. And, I, and the thing is, this character almost just came off as that regular problem the week scenario. Yeah. yeah. Very but much so. As soon as they bring him back in as a recurring character, you actually start seeing some of the more nuanced um, elements as in the show. Mm, definitely. And what is his special ability? If he possesses somebody, he can increase their power and help them channel it. Which is how Mob's brother learns to control his bit power. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Which but, was genius. Yeah, it was really cool. And I also want to address... What is the source for his power? Guilt <sighs> and self-hate, to some degree, powers his emotion. One is powered by just emotions in general. One is powered by guilt. 
And that yeah. says something quite a bit it right does. there, doesn't it? Makes me wonder about the parents, though, now. I'm not mm. gonna lie. Well, usually when it comes to the superpower beings, a lot of um, these fictional stories tend to say it's the father's fault. But you can't just blame it on them. You can't just blame it on them, because, I mean, as we said, the parents actually are very, very they seem nice. decent. decent. But we haven't gone that far. Yes. I'm hoping they're, they're good people, because from know. everything we've seen, yeah. it's good. But there is another psychic we should mention. Yeah. Hawazawa. Now, this character is one that I think you could, in a way, classify on the spectrum of Psycho to some degree. You really Especially yeah. when he's first introduced. Because, yeah. one, he thinks the world literally revolves around him. Mm -hmm. Well, Dimple also wants to be a god. But hold on! He wants to be a laughing god, okay? So basically, he wants to be a still living version of Chris Farley. Is a god so complex wrong? is a god complex. Yeah! But he just wants to make people laugh! That would be fine if it was a matter of fact he wants to force you to laugh. I mean, that's just not funny! Well, his whole thing is possessing people. Yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> that's just wrong. It's all Potato, way. tomato! Potato, <laughs> possession. Ninth tenths of the law. Yeah, you take it. Yeah, no, 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 it just doesn't work that way. But yes. Everybody's so uptight about Dimple, man. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I love Dimple. Dimple is awesome. He is, so awesome. He he is a fun character. character. But we got to get back to how Hanazawa. Yeah, exactly. All right. Who? When he's first injured, right? but yes, fuzzy Hanazawa. butt hair. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> fuzzy butt hair. He's not gonna let that go. No, I she's know. not gonna let it go. <laughs> so it's Hanazawa too is. Basically, in any other anime, he could be seen as a main character, yeah. and he sees himself as the main character, and everyone else is just there to be... Well, in any respect, he's, yeah. he would be considered a main character since he's more... He does take on these antagonistic mm -hmm. traits. Very yeah. much so, yes. But when he encounters Mob, who is the only other psychic I think he's encountered... No, no, it is... No, 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 no. Yeah, you know, you're right. The the claws he's encountered claw, but it's the only one that hasn't you know openly attacked him. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. So he, challenge. he challenges him, and we see Mob unintentionally go ape shit on him a bit. Let's just go into that. The fight sequences oh. in this show are astounding. They and really are. And you, you know, I, you just can't. You know, they're big. They're they're, mm -hmm. they're amazing. Very big. And was there any doubt? You're talking about from the same creator that gave you One Punch Man. Definitely. Mob thing is really, Mob really screwed Hanazawa up though because not only, <laughs> not only mm -hmm. the butt hair, okay, that yeah. was or the hair on top of it took all that stuff. It took all the hair off, and then yeah. and then he comes back with the March Simpson beehive. I, I, I don't know. That was that big until they really zoomed oh, out. They zoomed I'm out, like, and it looks like it's crazy. got a cactus on like, its head. Yeah. <laughs> oh my how god! How has so much happened with this little boy's hair? <laughs> like, uh, like his butt, and then and then the, the well, shape. That's where all the hair came then, from, I think. <laughs> yeah. And then the beehive, just a massive, massive uh, man beehive. But I will say this. And he just walks around like it's normal, and nobody touches him. He has it. some great character development, though. He does. Yeah, he really does. He, he becomes nice once he mm -hmm. develops a beehive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it humanizes him a little. It really does. Or should I say humbled? Humbled. Humbled, yeah. yeah. Because, because he realizes that he's not the biggest big shot in town anymore. Yeah. Very true. And he tries to help out Mob's brother when Mob's brother is going a little crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, guess what? You were about to attack. Guess what? Okay, don't do that. Yeah, <laughs> Knock like, that off. Exactly. Stop it. Yeah, he's like, I was you once. I'm like, yeah, last week. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> like, was it like two hours ago you were like that? I just, I love how he comes to him all stage. I was you once. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Like, that was four hours uh, ago, dude. You're not that far past it, okay? Yeah, yeah you know? you're good. But you're right. You're right, though. He does go and help him and mm -hmm. improve his lot, offer him friendship, and they both improve mm -hmm. as a result. And he also later helps the other psychics that they encounter. That's true. After yeah. Claw intervenes. Now, we should mention a little bit about Claw. Mm -hmm. Claw is the evil organization trying to take sure. over the world so that Esper's rule. Yada, yada, because yada. anime, right? Yeah, you know. And, well, they make psychics. They force uh, latent psychic abilities out of people via torture, basically. What? I gotta say, because I love that. Mm -hmm. What? No. Hear me out. Hear me out. 
I mean, I, I love torture as next as much as the next person. But look, come on. I, I, look, look, I'll, I'll talk about this. I'm talking about the aspect as they don't treat it as something that only select few individuals can get. I mean, they do to extent with the idea that only certain individuals become aspirants, but they introduce the idea that latent psychic abilities, at least for the most part, mm -hmm. lies in everyone, and it only takes the desire and the ability to try and work towards getting that out of you. I, I like that you're so hopeful. <laughs> um, I like that you managed to see the best in this horrible, torturous... I'm not going to do either actions! I, I, I like that you saw the best, I like your spin on it, but while you're like, oh, they see the potential in everybody, what I want to know is what made them decide that torture was the magic bane that brings out the psychic abilities. I think they way. just decided. <laughs> they saw Deadpool. I think <laughs> Right. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, that's um, the, the bringing out the latent mutant abilities. Yeah, boy. That was the point of that. Uh, I mean, I just think that they like torturing people. Oh, I mean, people. I'm sure some of them do. Oh, yeah. I mean, that one guy who, who basically puts, like, uh, fake images of horrific images in people's heads. Oh, I was going to have to do a whole thing with Kidnap Retsu. Oh, oh that guy. Yeah. Oh, he, yeah, but Felix, a lot of these, uh, what, a lot of these oh, guys that yeah. have the yeah. psychic powers and they're using them for, you know, evil... Um, they, I feel, are pawns. Like, okay, oh, maybe yeah. no, they've definitely. learned to enjoy it because they've had to. You mm -hmm. either embrace the pain and you own it, or mm -hmm. you let it consume you. So to survive an environment like that, you have to learn to love pain, either receiving it or dishing it out. Well, it's a survival mechanism, but mm -hmm. I think the people that truly enjoyed dishing out the pain were the people who founded the company who decided mm -hmm. that this was the means they were going to use. That's yeah, true. I think that's to bring right. Out psychics. I mean look at the generals or whatever in the uh, in the army. They're called scars. Exactly. Because they got them from badly in the leader. Yeah. So I think that's a, a very Which was good a cool additive. That was actually kind of neat, I will admit. And some of their powers were really cool. You didn't see much of them. You saw some of them here and there. Mm -hmm. I want to see more about the one with the dolls. That just seemed cool. Yeah, they did. But, kind of, um... Kind of creepy. Oh, yeah. That was kind of the point. But, but you know, I want to go into the aspect is, mm -hmm. um, you realize this show is, what well, I think this is the next one in the series from the creator from One Punch Man. Yeah. And I'm looking at this and comparing it to One Punch Man, and I gotta say, I like this anime more. Only for the main fact is that I do realize that Mob and uh, Saitama have a bit of common as far as mm. the most overpowerful characters in the world. But mm. Mob, to me, is a little bit better because he's shown to have some sort of a weakness. Not necessarily mm -hmm. a big weakness, but he does have flaws. Yes. And it allows mm. you a little bit more um, connection with him. And a lot more mm. growth. Definitely. Mm -hmm. That's something you don't see in Saitama so much. You don't no. see too much growth yeah. in him. You just see him being bored mostly. And just exactly. Like, mm, it's and not there really are some really yeah. great opportunities for growth and character development mm -hmm. between the brothers. Exactly. Because Mob's brother, Retsu, Retsu. Retsu. Mm -hmm. he was harboring so much jealousy, anger, guilt, resentment, everything toward Mob, toward himself. Mm -hmm. And he he basically expresses this to Mob. He's like, Mob, I'm sorry. And all Mob has to say to that is, I'm glad you're safe. That's so awesome. Yeah. It, it was so beautiful to me because it's like, you can overcome anything with love. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going all like, freaking Disney on you now. Oh, and, it's okay. You know, yeah. Far from Disney. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. That is, that is. But like the, the overcoming things with love. Yeah. Patience, understanding, you know, letting go of grudges and such. Brotherly <sighs> love. <laughs> but you know what? I, I think we've gone on enough. I think we should get on to the uh, actual interview. Now, I apologize in advance. The video isn't the best quality. Our original setup to record didn't quite pan out, so bear with us, please. Uh, and we also didn't have this guy with us. Unfortunately, we didn't. But he will be there next time. I'll be there for you. All right. And now we give to you the great, the amazing, the fantastic, 
Now we're just gushing and yes, kissing we are. Yes, he we already are. did the interview with we us. We know he did. But yeah. we love him anyway. So thank you, Chris Niosi. It meant the world to us. Yes, thank you. And thank if you're you. watching this, please don't be too weirded out by the fact that we yeah. are just gushing over you. First off, we wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, your one of your more recent roles in uh, Mob Psycho mm -hmm. uh, as Reagan, yeah. and uh, we wanted to know how did you. <laughs> you mean? Hold on, sorry, I forgot I have a little. Oh, a little oh there you go. Guy right here. Aww, <laughs> he's, he's so little, cute. That's awesome. Yeah, that's convention. I'm also on the other side. We oh. have Mob. Oh. Mob. I'm down the phone being, Bob, do the thing. It's going to be okay, kiddo. So, you know, a lot of time. Um, Reagan was actually one of our favorite characters when we Very were watching that so. first season. Um, <laughs> he's so hilarious. And um, that actually, like, just straight off the bat, are you coming back for season two? Is there a season two <laughs> that you know, you're coming I, I, back for? I certainly hope there will be. Mm -hmm. I know that there's plenty more material to derive from mm -hmm. uh, in the manga. I think what's coming next in terms of, like, the show in general is uh, probably the Blu-ray release of mm -hmm. season one. I think there's, there's, I'm sure there's a good chance of it. I think that they'll probably want to wait until after season two of One Punch Man mm -hmm. uh, goes forward, because that's, you know, the next big thing. And, of course, One Punch Man is a lot bigger than Mob Psycho by comparison. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, but we certainly hope so. Uh, you know, we, we want to do more. I hear there's a lot of really cool stuff that happens later in the story. Uh, and the manga and everything, but uh, but as of this moment, this is May 2017, we're recording mm -hmm. this. Uh, we don't have any official confirmation yet on uh, if, uh, if we're going to get to do more, but but if we do, mm -hmm. and it's still being done uh, at, at the same studio or somewhere where I can, I, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm happy to come back and, and play uh, play in the sandbox again with all these, these lovely, lovely characters. One thing we wanted to ask you was, how did you get into character for it, exactly? What are his, uh... What was your process? Yes. Well, uh, so when when we auditioned for um, for anime, uh, so with the company that we that we did the recording at, mm -hmm. uh, this place called Bang Zoom. So they usually will send a clip of the the character in like. A, so they send audition sides are they'll usually have like a good number of lines depending on like how big the character is, mm -hmm. and they'll uh, you know usually give a couple different scenes showing different emotions them and everything. So with Reagan, um, when I was auditioning him for him, they, they gave us two scenes. It was uh, when he's interviewing... Oh, he's he's talking to the guy who he gives, like, the crazy massage to. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then the scene where uh, Mob is trying to get, like, coaxed into joining the... Um, oh, God, the, the, uh, the, the telepathy club. Yeah. yeah. And he's on the phone being like, don't listen to them, etc. cetera. Yeah. So I did two takes. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, they, so I did one. I was trying to get as close to the Japanese sound as possible, uh, mm -hmm. which is the the great Takahiro Sakurai, who's a fantastic like veteran uh, mm -hmm. Japanese voice actor. Uh, and then the second take, I did something just a little bit more in my natural speaking voice, um, which we and, can uh, recognize. Mm -hmm. And then, so once I got the part, uh, I marathoned the whole show in Japanese with a good friend of mine who's a big fan of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, definitely got the full scope of like what his arc was going to be in, this, in the, the 13 episodes we were going to be doing. Mm -hmm. And um, in terms of inspiration, uh, weirdly, um, a lot of well, a lot of different things depending on like the scene, depending on like the episode or like the mood he was in. He has so much like emotional range and goes everywhere. Probably yeah. a, a, like a big influence was uh, a lot of like Jim Carrey type stuff. Like um, yeah. a lot of the way that, that certain deliveries with the like. Well, of course you don't, you idiot. Like a very like, <laughs> manic, crazy type of stuff. Um, but there are also lots of little references that I put to um, different things I was deriving references from with different lines. I, I can't think of specifics off the top of my head, but just like I tried. He's so like all over the place and very. He's such a gift in terms. He's he's very challenging and very hmm. like physically exhausting. But he's such a rewarding like fun character where you get to be like ride the highs and lows and be funny and yell and be subtle and serious and like emotional and I was like oh my god this is like a gift <laughs> you know when I got it when I got the part I was like I was, I'm not kidding I'm not like hashtag humble bragging mm -hmm. I thought it was a fluke I was like did they run out of people because I don't usually get the like lead main type characters mm -hmm. at Bang Zoom they have a lot of these other guys that uh, are often they go to first but this was this was a character that I happened to I think it was also because for <laughs> 
<clears throat> better or worse, uh, I'm a lot like him. <laughs> How so? <laughs> yeah. Not something that's necessarily a good thing in all cases, yeah. but um, I think that that's why he was such a good natural fit for just my animated weird sense of being mm. and it just it was it was a good fit so so i'm very how, thankful to do it that's awesome how yeah. how are you and reagan alike um well uh i like to think we both have a nice sense of charisma um <laughs> probably a little on the manipulative side to get what we need and to get what we want mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. but even with that still very much care about others and still very sensitive and have a, you know, this kind of specific set of morals. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm finding also in, in my, I'm, I'm 28. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't find okay. myself in any kind of even remote uh, state of readiness for like having like a family or like children or anything. But I'm finding that I'm, I'm having very kind of like more, Maybe it is just also with the characters I'm playing with very kind of like paternal feelings of like wanting to protect like kids and also wanting to like set them straight and be like, no, like you gotta, you gotta like do the right thing and do it this way and mm -hmm. et cetera. And like, you know, do as I say, not as I act kind of thing. <laughs> uh, I can definitely so, see that in the, in the show a bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I love, I love Mob. Mob is mm -hmm. such a wonderful main character. Uh, I, I've really, yeah, that's the other thing. In recent years, I've grown just like as a consumer of mm -hmm. awesome media, I've grown to really, really like uh, little kid characters a lot. Mm -hmm. Mom's like 14, so he's not like super little, but he's, he's still a kid. Mm -hmm. uh, and so like, I also personally find him very adorable, which I think went through with, you know, my, even when I'm like calling him an idiot, it's <laughs> still mm -hmm. just like, oh, but it's with love. I love you, mom. <laughs> it's don't, in the don't, script. Don't yeah. <laughs> It really is interesting to kind of note the similarities. You said that he was challenging. Was it, was it just in terms of keeping up with the energy required for the character, or was it more than that? It was. It was definitely the energy. So, so when we started, uh, we started recording the show back in November of 2016, and uh, kind of right off the heels of, uh, of Thanksgiving. And I, at the time, was kind of experiencing like three Thanksgivings in a row that week because I had a bunch of people come in from out of town so and I didn't food. have a second to just stop talking mm -hmm. in between that. So I was very tired and very like my voice was just so shot and et cetera. So when, um, when we were starting recording and we spent, uh, this, this was so good is that, uh, the, the folks from Crunchyroll really gave us a lot of freedom in, mm -hmm. uh, in, in recording. They weren't like over our heads, like giving us a lot of like micromanaging or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, and we had a lot of time. So we spent, I, I had, I think in total, not in all one sitting, but over the course of like a week or two, <laughs> um, about eight and a half hours of recording on just episode one. Um, mm -hmm. so I did... Uh, like all like seven gajillion lines of because Reagan has so much stuff in the first episode. Yeah, we really, really took our time with getting it just right. And uh, Chris Kaysen, who is our voice director in the series, who's fantastic, was a show that was right up his alley with this like sense of comedy and mm -hmm. etc. <laughs> and um, we uh, we worked super hard on it. It was really fun. And even like in the first couple episodes, there's a couple moments where like oh, I can hear my voice is like not at a hundred percent, uh, like, you know, strength, I, I guess, to sound like a DBZ character. <laughs> uh, there's a couple, there's a couple little things that oh, well, I would have been able to do that better if just my, my voice was in better condition. But, you know, we, we had to keep going and I, I was, mm -hmm. I really went like as, as balls to the walls as I could in the performance and really tried to do a good job because I, I knew how important this character was and how big of a, like, standard I was being held to. <laughs> And, and I'm very happy that, for the most part, it seems that people were really, really happy with how it turned out. Like, the dub in general, not just me. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm very, very happy with the dub uh, overall. I, I think it turned out fantastic. And, um, and yeah, but so it was it was very challenging, mostly from the physicality and just, like, the, the like, ye constant, like, yelling and, like, craziness and all of it. But it was so much fun, and it was so, so, gra like, gratifying. So it's not a complaint in any way. I, I, I'm so pleased with how it turned out, absolutely. I loved the performance. I really did. I thought it was one of the standout of the series. Okay, I'm, I, I don't mean to blow smoke out No, on truthfully. That, but truthfully, yeah. <laughs> loved it. I really, I really appreciate it. Because, like, think... <laughs> if I'm being honest, um, I didn't know the names of anybody who voiced 
the dub mm -hmm. for this show. So when we watched it for the review, and Stuart was telling mm -hmm. me that you were interested in doing an interview with us, and, and he's like, hey, we've got Chris Neosi, and mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, that's cool. And then I'm like, so who does he voice? And he's like, Reagan. And I'm like, ah! Like, yeah, so... Just like that. After that, I kind of freaked the fuck out, but... <laughs> yeah, it, it's funny. The casting turned out, I think, very interestingly, too, because we had a nice mix of, like, the semi, like, newer... Like, I, I'm, I'm part of, like, the newer generation. Mm. Like, me and, like, Kyle McCarley and Eric Kimmer or guys like that. And then we had a good mix of also, like, veterans, like Michael Sorich, who's, like... Like a first generation anime dub actor, uh, mm -hmm. the voice of Dimple. Yep. Who's so, nice. So funny. Oh, and, like, yeah. He was great in that. I had the pleasure of him to meet. I'm, I'm actually a huge fan of his work from like ever. Like, I, I grew up with him in like Power Rangers and Cyborg mm -hmm. Ranger and all this stuff. And he's so funny and such a good fit for Dimple. Uh, and like Kyle Bear and like Patrick Seitz and all these great guys that like, kind of scattered throughout the show are fantastic. Siri, I, I really, really like how mob turned out i think it was just so well done and it was it was so funny and like everybody did like worked so hard and it's like, such a good job and and i'm yeah i'm, I'm super happy with it so oh yeah. so are we as the fans yeah. we, we we love it i watched the first half of the entire series in japanese and then i switched over to english just so i could see what the transition was like and i loved it i really did i thought there wasn't a bad performance in the whole bunch and each person did a really solid job with each uh, characterization of it. And I could uh, note where sometimes we're trying to sound a bit more like the Japanese, as you said. But I think sometimes you, get, you make it your own a bit. And yeah. I think it's, it turned out very well. It really did. So do you mind if we go back to Reagan for just a minute? Oh, please. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Mm -hmm. So oh. when you're deciding your voice, when you're looking at the character and figuring out how you want to portray them... Uh, do you ever look into their motivations, whether internally or externally, like maybe somebody's given you a history of mm -hmm. the character? I kind of was wondering if maybe you had any insight as to why Reagan chose to pretend he had psychic abilities for his um, business. Well, there are some things, there's a couple things that I, I have been told about from the manga uh, that I actually won't say because some of them are spoilers. I don't know the exact reason as to why. I mean, I think it just, you know, like I, I've, I've been watching uh, Better Call Saul recently and yeah. actually uh, uh, Jimmy McGill and Reagan actually have uh, quite a bit in common as well. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, you know, I, I'm not entirely sure. I'm, I'm, I assume we'll probably go into maybe more of his backstory as to like kind of what led him to where he is now a little later on. Um, but I don't know. It just kind of seems like life sort of took him this way and he just kind of found like that what he's good at is he kind of went with it. being mm -hmm. a uh, being a BSer. <laughs> so but sad. he's like the sweetest BSer ever. Not mm -hmm. just because he takes care of Mob, but because he literally his BSing is about making people feel good. Like yeah. he he cooks them meals and gives them back massages. massages like and, yeah. heck, like he, I mean, it's not man, like he's swindling money for nothing. He's still providing he a service. service. Yeah. 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 He, he's he's very like he is very kind of like morally gray, but like airs toward the light side in terms mm -hmm. of like, because he's not a, I wouldn't call him like a good person necessarily because he is even though he genuinely cares for Mob very much and mm -hmm. I think that he does want him to like follow a good path. He is manipulating Mob like that's mm -hmm. an undeniable fact is that he is Definitely. using him. Definitely. Um, you know, and, and it's up to, you know, for now, it's up to the imagination on whether Mob necessarily knows that or not. Because Mob's not stupid. No. You know, it's very possible he, he does. It's very possible he doesn't. I um, think he knows, because he's like, why didn't you take care of this? He I does think, question that a lot, I think yeah. he's too polite to directly call him out. I think that's, like, an American thing to do. Yeah, and um, as far as, like, kind of the, pardon me, uh, the kind of in-the-moment choices... Um, yeah, there were definitely things like, um, you know, I French that I was joking before about like when he'll be like, you idiot, like to mob, you know, like we, we, we try to play that, like, we don't want to be too harsh because he's, he's blunt with mob because he's looking out for him and he doesn't want him to get like, he doesn't want anything bad to happen to him. So he'll be very like, just completely bluntly truthful, which I am much like also with a lot of my, my very close friends is I'll just be like, dude, don't just stop kind of thing, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But 
like yeah, like we we would try to play, to to kind of play it um, like balance out like being blunt but not being like mean or harsh necessarily right. unless mm-hmm. talking Tough to love. somebody who's like yeah. like he like when he's yelling at um tome over like no 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 don't you stay away from my son all right no he's you're not suffering him into your stupid club or whatever <laughs> <laughs> that thing. like when he need or like when he's uh when, he, when he's he's taking care of those those jerks with the vase that are trying to like actually like legit spend mm-hmm. a little mob out of a ton of money and he's like, Oh you're oh you're gonna play my game? you no no <laughs> no you don't play my game. This is my territory and right. done. And just, I like, love oh, that. Oh that's me. Mm, we're square, aren't we? How about that? You know? mm-hmm. <laughs> right. So um, yeah, so a, a lot of uh, and, and I just I always try to keep it varied. I always try to to make him like as interesting and like just, just well rounded and like like to fit with like because also like the animation is so spectacular for the oh, show too. Yeah, so, sure. like the expressions are ridiculous and the like <laughs> like type of like you know, this little this little hand thing. Mm-hmm. Like, no problem. No, I, oh, that's <laughs> uh, Reagan is much more up my alley in terms of like because I mean you can tell I'm like <laughs> etc. Yeah, he's like really. We never would have right? noticed. <laughs> He's like, yeah, so like, so look, Reagan was just so comfortably mm-hmm. comfortable because I'm just like, oh, I'm I'm this in real life, so it's just it's, it just comes easily. I, I guess a little more. I hate in anime when there are characters that just sound like this, and this is the only way that their lines will ever be delivered. Yeah. Stop, stop yeah. calling me that. I will defeat you, and I'm just like, I hate you, you and your boring uh, suck. Like I hate it's that. It's yep. so, yeah. And because uh, even what I can, uh, like, Mob's not like that, but what I love, Kyle was, because he's so good, Kyle, Kyle McCarley, who voices him, is able to make Mob, like, that very kind of monotone thing, but he's also, like, still really cute, and, like, he gets that kind of, like, yeah. And also, like, it comes from a place of, like, it makes sense, and it's not just, like, I'm going to deliver every line the same, and I'm just like, Kyle, you're the best. God, I love you. Uh, <laughs> the best, so. So what was your favorite scene when you were working with Reagan? My okay, my favorite serious scene, without spoiling too much stuff, is Oh, um, you can spoil. We talk like like spoilers. Oh, um yeah, favorite serious scene was definitely the whole sequence of um like Mom, don't do it and then you'll be the one suffering in the end and then the flashback which mm-hmm. is so cute with a little little teeny tiny mom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, that whole that whole part was super cool, and then uh, oh god, there's so many funny scenes. Like, oh man, uh, all I mean, all the all the like secret technique, like. Oh, <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> my favorite one of those, by the way, my my favorite of those. The, the funniest one is hypnosis punch, just because. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I loved my, it. My personal favorite one is a room a runaway express. Hog is the best. <laughs> um, and I, I also really, okay, just because this was so, like, tricky to get just right, and it really made people laugh a lot mm-hmm. when it came out, uh, one of my, la- the last thing I recorded, and it's one of my last scenes in the show, mm-hmm. is uh, the the very last thing at the very end, uh, when it's, like, the short. Oh, yeah. After the, after the final episode, and so they mm-hmm. go looking for the um, the little, like, like the... Snake the, thing? The uh, UMA creature, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, so when he's, like, running away from, like, the giant monster, he's like, you idiots! Those things don't exist! And it's like, what? What? And I just, like, <laughs> quit and then kill it. And literally, we had to do, like, eight takes of, of just, just the cat! Like, this, I can't even replicate it. Yeah. <laughs> it did pretty good. Yeah. You did like that. The engineer, the engineer uh, uh, June, who's a great guy, and he's I've worked with him on a bunch of anime stuff as well, uh, mm-hmm. he was like, okay, Chris, I need you to step, like, two feet away from the microphone and be, like, kind of at an angle because <laughs> it's hilarious and I love this, but the mic is, it's just, like, a spike on the waveform and it's coming yeah. every time. And I'm like, okay. So we kept getting it and we got it just right. And, it, and so so that last delivery, the quick, quick, get it! It's like, a, like we doctored a bunch of takes together, a little secret. Um, but it turned out super well and everybody loves that. There's a, there's a great compilation of like all the stupid like sound effects and we were like blah, 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 and all that shit that I did that this is all on one big video whoever edited that I love you for that oh I gotta find that and make that my ringtone now right <laughs> yeah um, oh, actually there was sorry there's one sound effect I really I like stuck to so hard that I, that was cut uh so in the first episode, when when he's on the case of the ceiling crasher ghost, mm-hmm. and yeah. he's not gonna work, man. Bill Rogers is the ceiling crasher, mm-hmm. and I'm thinking to myself like, I 
I thought the spiritual working against any kind of salt. And he like flips his face around it. Like, oh, I'm just gonna pull out my my secret weapon or whatever. So the little part where you like and like goes back to serious mm-hmm. mode, I did like a <laughs> type noise mm-hmm. that was in Banjo Kazooie when you talk to the mole who like teaches you moves, he comes out of the molehill and he goes <laughs> And that's, like, one of my favorite noises ever. And I tried <laughs> so hard to keep that in case someone was like, you were very committed to that sound. And I'm like, I want it! I want it! I want it! And it was not in it. And I was like, damn oh. I was upset about it, but whatever it happens. So, oh, anyway. no. Life. Well, I definitely love when when you're, like, big and, and ostentatious mm-hmm. for Reagan, but I have to say one of my favorite things that you did with the character was exceedingly subtle. Um... Beyond the the endings where you're talking about, like, buying the DVD and an excellent choice and things like that, (laughs) uh, I also actually really thought it was amazing when, like, all this stuff is happening with Mob toward the end and suddenly his powers are transferred to Reagan. And Reagan's first thought is, huh, I'm having a really good day. And Mm -hmm. that, I don't know why, but that was, like, one of... One of my favorite things is just when Reagan's like, I'm having a really good day. I, like, pop the collar. In that same scene, there's, a, there's that, that cool shot where he's, like, whipping away the little mm-hmm. gravity balls, and he's just like, what are these, soap bubbles? What is this? And I just, I just talk. I'm just, like, being real, and I'm just mm-hmm. like, that's why I like it, because it's like, I, I actually, doing, like, character voice stuff is fun, and, like, okay, KO, I get to do a lot of, like, very, like, exaggerated and, like, ah, type of stuff, but, like, my favorite thing that I'm always the most comfortable in is when I'm just being real and I'm just like purely focused on the performance. And Reagan, again, because he was just so comfortable, I could just like focus entirely on the the acting and the subtlety and the like funny comedy shit and like the variation of everything. It was great. It was, it was super cool. So he was very dynamic. Very much so, definitely. Um, so. Well, thank you so much. It's it's been a pleasure. Thank it really you guys has. For thank me. You. This is great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, thank you. We uh, we, we really, really enjoyed it. talking to you. Thank you. It's been a, it's been a blast. It really has been. It really has. We learned a lot. Um, mm-hmm. you've you've been just so kind and polite. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, good mm-hmm. luck with everything you do. We are, we are in your corner, sir. Bad, we are. Oh, I can't wait to see it. what else you come up with. But, uh, yeah, thank you guys so much. Hey, no worries. Thanks. Thank you. Well, thanks for watching. Hey, thanks for watching the dub for Mob Psycho, too. We're so happy that people enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we really hope that maybe it has, like, a chance on Adult Swim someday. I think it would do really Oh, well I think TV it would, too, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think, uh, I don't know when the, when they're going to do the home release, but uh, if you enjoyed it also, pick up the, the home release when it comes out, Blu-ray or mm-hmm. DVD or or whatever it's going to be, and, uh, yeah. Definitely, <laughs> and thank you for breathing life into such a great character. Oh, thank you. My, I didn't. I, that, that credit goes to the creators and the original Japanese. All right, but... all right. Yes and no. Yes and no. Because, like, on the one hand, yes, they wrote the character, but if it hadn't been delivered the way that it had, it may not have stuck in our hearts yeah. quite as much well, at like least not in mine because like i said from day one reagan was just like balls out and hilarious mm-hmm. and like ridiculous and then like he he snaps like a, a complete 180 and he's suddenly just this really caring vulnerable sort of man mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. i i like you said anybody could be a voice actor but not everybody could be a good one. Mm-hmm. So you really did breathe life into this character. And well, uh, I'm just happy to be a small cog in the gravy machine. I'm glad that people like the show. I'm glad that people enjoy the dub. Um, you know, and uh, again, I hope we get to do more. So Yeah. Well, we'll be looking forward to it. Well, so. we hope you thank can you. do more. So mm-hmm. yes. yeah. 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 Once again, thank <laughs> you, you so much. much. And- we are, all right. I will. Uh, I will see you all very soon. All, all right. right. Thank see you ya. very much. Yeah, have, have a great one. night. All right. Bye. You too. Bye. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Bye. <laughs>
And this has been Animation Triad! Awkward finger guns! Ah! The fuck? Am I a psychic?